Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Do, Polaris Terrain Domination, and by FXR Racing Full Throttle Addiction. When I think about Quebec, there's three things that pop into my mind. Culture, the people, and the scenery. I guess Quebec is different than Ontario or other places I've been to because it has a real European feel. The way they do things and, and the way they communicate, it's, it's just different and it really makes you feel like you've traveled a lot further from home than you actually have. This trip came at a really opportune time. We've been having the longest winter in decades in Ontario, and I felt like I had one more ride left in me, so this opportunity came up to go to Quebec late in the season, and I knew there's one other guy who really hadn't had enough riding for the year, my buddy Jason, so I called him up and thought, he just, he's the perfect guy to bring along. He's as enthusiastic about winter as I am. So what I heard about riding in Quebec for the last few years from people that I know is that the trail systems were amazing, always groomed, uh, really wide, and a lot of them were, were really straight and fast in the sections that they had rode, so I was excited to go see what we were getting into. For this trip, we're actually gonna start kind of the drive in Quebec City and travel north along the St. Lawrence to the town of Tadoussac. I've never been to Tadoussac before and ridden that area, so it's gonna be interesting to see what it's like. And then we're gonna carry on further north along the St. Lawrence to the town of Bay Como, which is actually more of a small city. It seems like every year, through no actual planning, we end our season with a story in Quebec. And it's got to be because it's almost April 1st and they've still got like six feet of snow in the bush, you know? So obviously that, that plays a big factor in coming here at the end of our year. Right. Well, so far it looks really good, so. Well, I hope it lives up to my description and your expectations. <laughs> The first thing that stood out to me on the drive to Tadoussac is, is the view. I mean, you're driving right along the edge of the St. Lawrence. When the tide goes out, these huge chunks of ice are left on the ground. It just looks so bizarre and beautiful. Just before you get to Tadoussac, the road ends and you have to get on a ferry with your truck and trailer to get any further along the road. So that was kind of neat to travel across the Saguenay Fjord that we would see later. That is a big piece of steel to be going that fast, man. How do they stop oh, yeah, it? That's like rocket. If the Reverse throttle thrust. If the throttle stuck wide open, you'd end up right up on top <laughs> of that hill. Man, you wouldn't want to screw up and come in too hot, would you? No way. Bang. Okay, well that's the least precise thing I've ever seen. <laughs> The actual snowmobile portion of this adventure began for Jason and I just outside the town of Sacre Coeur. We stayed at a lodge called Ferme Saint Etoile. It was the perfect place for us to set up camp and start our first couple days of riding because it's right on the trail and it's right near the fjord, which was something we absolutely had to see. We got hooked up with a guide who actually worked at Ferme saint -Quitois. His name was Derek, and he knew the area inside and out. He knew the back trails, he knew the, the snowmobile trails. He was the perfect guy to show us everything this area had to offer. So uh, this morning we are going towards Les Escoumets. We'll be taking the road 93 north. Uh, we'll be taking some large trails, some with uh, sharp turns going up, going down, and we'll be exploring the forest in that area. And this afternoon we're coming back, we are going towards the Saguenay Fjord, we'll have some nice viewpoints, mountains, we'll all be, almost be able to go down the water with the sleds. And we'll be able to see right over to the water. Very nice viewpoints. All right, well, let's, let's go do it. Great. Snow Tracks is sponsored by snowmobileinquebec.com. This winter, experience snowmobile heaven. The thing I was looking forward to most about this area was definitely the landscape. It's very, very diverse, and I figured for sure, if any landscape was gonna provide a lot of opportunities to adventure and explore, this was an area that would.
Knowing that Quebec trails are among the best in the world, I was really excited for Jason to experience them. I've ridden Quebec many times, he never has. So I was interested to see how he enjoyed it. And the first part of the day was, was perfect for him. It was tight and twisty, uh, lots of ups and downs. It was similar to how we ride at home, but the trails were actually in better shape. And I mean, he just absolutely loved it right from the get-go. What I was expecting from the trails in this area before we got there was that they were gonna be really wide and straight and long and, and fast riding. But when we got there, it was like, it was great because it was twisty. They were very well groomed, but it was twisty and a lot of trees and hills and stuff. It was, it was really fun. They're as close to perfect as you can get. They're wide, they're groomed perfectly, they're perfectly maintained, and they're fun. They twist and turn and they go up and down through the hills. A lot of rock cuts, like straight up and down the, the sides of the trails and stuff like that. And a lot of lookouts, like you'd, you'd be driving along and then all of a sudden there'd be like, you know, a thousand foot drop down to another plateau of trees. It was, it was awesome. The place Derek took us for lunch was so typical of a small town restaurant in Quebec, it almost makes me laugh. From the outside, not to be mean, it almost looked like a place you might want to avoid. On the inside, the food was great, the people were nice, we had an awesome meal. It was the perfect spot to stop, get some Quebec culture, get fueled up for the rest of the afternoon. Derek's plan for a ride after lunch was to show us the Saguenay Fjord. And he didn't just want to show us it, he wanted to show us it from the absolute best spot possible. So we actually traveled down the trail through some farmer's fields and wound around following him until we got to a spot where we went off the trail, down these hydro lines through these, he called them private trails. They were private property that he had permission to, to access. You know, we rode some really cool spots in the trees, up and down some serious hills, until we got to what I would categorize as one of the nicest overlooks I've ever seen. The view overlooking the fjord was, in a word, it was spectacular. Derek was also the perfect guy to take us there because he knew everything there was to know about the Saguenay Fjord. Uh, mostly here the attraction is the whales. This special uh, type of water we have is good for the belugas. They come up the fjord and they give birth to their babies just a little bit up. Now we are on the Cap Saint Marguerite. The Bay Saint Marguerite is just on the other side of this mountain hmm. and that's a very a nice place to see belugas. So at the end of the day, Derek had this plan of um, throwing Luke into this wolf pen and having them pet the wolves. I didn't know if he was joking at first or what, but he was dead serious. See, those two look cute and cuddly. They're playing with each other and being all lovey. This one's looking at me like he wants to eat my face. Yeah. And you'd be surprised the two, the two small ones are more of a challenge than this one because they're babies. So all they care about is killing. Uh, he's, he's older, sometimes he's, he doesn't He's grown care. out of that? He's grown Not out of the yet. killing phase? <laughs> Basically, the wolf will want to play with you, and playing for him means trying to steal some stuff from you. It also means it will jump for your face. Wolves, when they fight, that's what they look for. The neck, the face. But I need you to lock this behind me, because he will probably jump to come and see us, so I will keep him busy while you lock it, just so he doesn't run away. You know, it's not just like... Just so you know, I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, I've got him busy for a second. Name one thing I never thought I'd be doing. Locking myself in a cage Locked. with a wolf. It's going out of this square. We want to go out because we don't have room to work. They wanted my neck right away. Right for the neck every time. Yeah. Or the crotch, don't do that. Turn your back. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you can pet him, huh? 
Yeah. When I touch them, it's just to make sure that it doesn't go away. I won't be mad if you, if you touch it. It was a lot less scary than I thought once I was in there. The wolf was actually very friendly. I'm not going to venture into the woods and go petting all the wolves I see, but that one was really nice and it was a really cool experience. And I was appreciative that Derek allowed us to do it. Uh, it's the end of the season, so snow is getting out. how much better I feel right now than I did just two seconds ago. The answer is a lot. Closed captioning of Snow Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, the cornerstone of every adventure. Jason and I were really excited about the second half of this trip, simply because it was going to be so different than the first half. We were going to be staying at this historic old place called Hotel Le Manoir, which is about as opposite as you can get from Ferme saint etoile So we left from the hotel and um, drove along the water there, in through town, and then climbed up some pretty steep hills. And then once we got up there on the like a plateau area, we uh, we got on some trails that were really fairly straight and fast. We didn't have a guide with us on this portion of the trip, so Jason and I could really put the hammer down and, and put the trails to the test. Back at home, Jason and I, we're pretty evenly matched in terms of riding ability, and we really like to push each other, like to get right up on a snow flap. So it was really nice to be able to, to ride the same way in Quebec safely on these perfect trails and really blow off some steam, put on some serious miles, do it real quick, blast some corners, you know, hold the sleds wide open for, for long periods of time, something you can't do back home. It was a really, really fun portion of trail, a fun section of area to ride. I really found it interesting that you can um, have all these various types of riding in, in a, such a short area, really, within a couple hours. You come into, out of the twisty trails and the, and the slower pace through the bushes and stuff like that into like long, straight, wide stretches of riding. You know, that's one of the things I really like most about Quebec is that you have the opportunity to ride in all different conditions. You get to ride different trails. Riding styles can vary from day to day. One day you can be riding slower on really tight scenic stuff. The next day you can be opening it up on these great big wide trails that climb up and down hills. You get it all, and you get it all in one spot when you're in Quebec. There was one spot we really wanted to see and one thing in that area we wanted to, uh, to experience, and that was this humongous snowmobile-specific bridge that crosses a, a really big river. At first glance, it looks a little rickety, it's not, but we took the opportunity to cross it and, uh, and take in the sights. When you're up on top of the bridge, you can see a long way down the river each direction. It's one of the more unique trail features I've ever seen, and it led us onto a bit slower paced trail, um, headed back home, and uh, we ended up at this really nice overlook that you could see the whole town of Bay Como. It was really pretty as the sun went down. To finish off this trip, I wanted to do something that A, I'd never done before, and B, was gonna be pretty neat. And uh, one of the things that's unique about this area of Quebec is that they have a lot of ferries. There's a lot of water crossings that you simply can't drive around. So they just fire up a great big ferry and you put your truck and trailer on it, you drive across. And you don't do that where I'm from. You don't do that in a lot of places. So I thought, you know what, let's take one of the biggest ferries that the area has to offer. And instead of going back south to Quebec City on the roads, we were gonna cross the entire St. Lawrence on the ferry with our truck and trailer full of snowmobiles. You gotta be impressed by coming out in the beginning of April and riding 300 kilometers on perfect trails with lots of snow. Oh yeah, it's amazing. I don't think too many places you can actually do that. Definitely not. It only seems fitting to end a trip like this with a ferry ride across the St. Lawrence, doesn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. But I think it'd be cooler though if, if we were ever to do this again, and we will, instead of going across with a truck, finish the trip by going across on sleds. Yeah. That'd be cool. Seeing the 
the fjord to riding the trails around Bay Como to taking a ferry across the St. Lawrence. This is the only place you can do that stuff in a couple days and we did. And to be perfectly honest, I can't think of a better way to close a season than with a trip like this. And the only place you can do a trip like this is in Quebec. Test Ride is sponsored by Princess Auto, the unique world of equipment, tools, and more. It's no surprise that the past five years have shown significant advancement in the snowmobiling technology and that we right now are riding the very best snowmobiles ever produced. And of those advancements, one of the most recognizable would no doubt be the Polaris Rush and switchback in the ProRide chassis. Being a complete departure from what we typically view as a snowmobile rear suspension, the ProRide design changed the way we view skid frame suspension and opened our eyes to the broader spectrum of design approaches. While we truly enjoyed the suspension and performance of the ProRide chassis, it did have its drawbacks. And Polaris, being a company who never let off the gas and have their eyes set on first place market share, have yet again changed the game in 2015. Completely redesigning the switchback, the all new Axis platform is very similar looking, but incredibly different in design from the ProRide. Right from first glance, you can tell the Axis is smaller overall. It's significantly tighter and more compact packaging has allowed Polaris to not only create a more sleek and profiled snowmobile, but also reduce weight to the tune of 30 pounds. The sled I'm testing today is called the Switchback Pro X, and it's one of only two variations of the Switchback available for 2015. For 2015, all Axis platforms offer both Pro X and Pro S packages, and while everyone seems to associate the letter X with the most premium offering, the truth is, both of these models are equally premium, but focus on different riding disciplines. Sound confusing? Let me explain. Without going into great detail about the Pro S, its focus is the hardcore trail rider, while the Pro X is targeted at the off-trail ditch banger. The Pro X features 1.5 inch longer shocks up front, a two inch taller rear ride height, and more aggressive shock valving along with a 3.5 inch taller riser and a beefy front color matched bumper. It also adds a 1.75 lug track to tackle just about anything you'd find when flatland free riding. While most riders will immediately set their sights on the Pro X, the truth is the Pro S is gonna be the sled for the majority of hardcore trail riders and the X will be for those who venture off the beaten path. So how's it ride? Well, the truth is the X is one tall drink of water and when you add all that extra ride height along with a deeper lug track, you get yourself a sled that becomes pretty tippy in the corners. But you have to weigh out the benefits. If you truly enjoy pounding bumps, sending your sled off anything you can find to get air, and want the full capability of going off trail, the Pro S will not satisfy you. The Pro X is less capable on the trails, but far more capable off. So it truly becomes a choice of what you do more. I'm not saying it's a bad trail sled by any means, but it does want to roll because of its extra height, much quicker than the Pro S would. Because the Axis is such a cool looking sled, it's very easy to overlook one of the most important features, the all new 800HO Clean Fire. With the three stage electronically controlled exhaust valves, electronic oil pump, high flow intake and lighter exhaust, you'd expect an increase in performance. But add to this the crank that has been lightened by 2.5 pounds and you get yourself what might be the biggest power in the 800 category, with what will no doubt be the best power to weight ratio in the business. And if you thought fuel and oil consumption would be increased, think again. The 800HO claims better fuel and significantly better oil consumption. Truly the best of both worlds. The Axis is breaking barriers in the snowmobile world. And while it looks great from the outside, the truth is under the hood, there's a whole lot of very cool features. First in the industry use of carbon fiber components, the Axis has its share, including the very important frame spars. Out front, your path will be guided by yet another industry first, full LED headlight system. And if you snow check a 60th anniversary edition or checkbox for the full LCD gauge display, you have what I can only compare to an iPod mini in place of your instrumentation with integrated Bluetooth to show you when you receive a call or a text message. And for those who never want to get lost, the option of a fully integrated GPS with real automotive style maps. The switchback in the Axis platform is truly changing the game for Polaris in 2015. They're taking a product that was good and making it even better. Will it be the best for 2015? 
you're going to have to tune in to our final episode of the season and see where this sled falls in the Snow Tracks Real World Sled of the Year Award. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Go Ride Ontario, yours to discover. If you like this video, post a comment and tell us what you think. Then click on this link to subscribe to Snowtracks TV here on the YouTube channel.